One of the things uh, that we're noticing is that China may be trying to take advantage of this time where Americans are obviously very, very focused on this election. For example, um, there are reports that China has, or the Chinese Communist Party has authorized its Coast Guard to fire upon vessels in its territorial, or in some cases, so-called territorial waters. Are you familiar with this, and what do you make of it? Well, um, the interesting thing about following Chinese policy over the last, say, year or so is it, it's interesting that, that the Chinese seem to be, uh, the Chinese Communist Party and the leadership seem to be trying to adjust to a new international environment. They, they were in an environment where there was very, very little pushback or friction against the expansion of Chinese influence. Um, that's changed considerably over the last three years in part because of American leadership, but also in part because of Chinese actions in Hong Kong, where they have abrogated their obligations under international treaties on how they treat their own people, the Hong Kong people, um, increased concerns about human rights, particularly the situation of the Uyghurs, um, the, the response to the pandemic, where a lot of people do blame China for the pandemic going global and not pre helping prepare for a global and national response to them, and kind of... Uh, um, hiding the fact and, and pushing policies to their liking. Um, there's a lot of dissatisfaction with the Belt and Road Initiative. As a matter of fact, we see the government really kind of walking away from that because it's not this bright shining offer anymore. It's actually viewed very skeptically. So there's this is a, a level of, of pushback um, that the Chinese haven't seen in years. Con concerns about Huawei and ZTE and and countries banning them for their markets, banning apps from their markets. Um, the, the, it's interesting to watch the Chinese respond to that uh, and, and, um, and, and really kind of seeking what's the right blend of, you know, good cop, bad cop. So we see this kind of China, in some places, this kind of China, China uh, wolf warrior diplomacy where, you know, following the famous Chinese movies, you know, getting out there and being really tough and bad mouthing people and bad mouthing the United States. But we've, we've also seen them, you know, accommodating. We've seen the leader come out at the UN General Assembly and promise to be the world global leader on climate change, even though they're the world's biggest polluter. Um, that's been interesting. And um, and now we, you know, have the results of the plenum and the, and the leadership and but, you know, how they choose to, to, to deal with that external bit. So we do, I think, you know, it's interesting to see them potentially um, test, test the boundaries, be a little more aggressive. I think it's premature to say whether they're really testing and pushing or they're really just kind of sending out feelers. I think in part, um, the Chinese uh, government in Beijing, the Beijing regime was worried about some kind of a aggressive response from the U.S. in the run-up to the elections, you know, so-called October surprise where the U.S. would be really tough. So, for example, I think they were very kind of demonstrative about Taiwan. I think that was largely because they were afraid the U.S. was going to do something terribly demonstrative about Taiwan. But the reality is, is President Trump is the president, at least until the end of January, um, U.S. policies won't change. We will be tough on Taiwan. We will be consistent in our policies on the South China Seas and on freedom of the seas. That won't change. And I think the Chinese do recognize that. Um, so uh, I, 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 I don't know how much real serious pushing we're going to see from China over the next few months. And, you know, what what would you expect to happen given these new rules? Is this just a test to see if someone will respond at all? Well, look, we've seen a couple of these things from China. I just don't know, right? You know, we saw, for example, where the Chinese said um, they were going to sanction U.S. companies. Well, what does that really mean? I mean, we have a sanctions regime under law. When the Chinese say they're going to sanction companies, well, what does that mean? It, it might mean they're going to do nothing, right? But but they're kind of demonstrating, well, well you sanctioned us or we're going to sanction you. So, you know, uh, did, is this just kind of blustering? Or does it actually mean a shift in policy to kind of take advantage while the U.S. is distracted? Look, I don't know if there's a there's a space that will really take advantage of the U.S. Look, the president's the president. President Trump's going to defend American interests every day he's in office. 
And I think the Chinese recognize that. Well, so let's talk about something that's, uh, you know, outside of the U.S., but I think still quite relevant. You know, right now they're also, uh, you know, seems to be attacking major Australian export markets and like blatant violation of WTO rules, at least in that sense, it's relevant. Um, and what do you make of that? Well, that's that's, of course, not new. That's been going on for a while now, where essentially you see the regime in Beijing punishing the Australians for the Australians have the audacity to push back on malicious activity from Beijing, which is bad for Australia. Like, how dare you challenge our ability to to kind of push you around? Um, I don't think that's unexpected in Australia. I think it actually steals Australian resolve against that. And I think much like the way they treated Hong Kong uh, and the way they've treated Taiwan, that their, their kind of belligerent bullying attitude towards Australia I think, if anything, that's going to strengthen international resolve. So, you know, what we've seen in the U.S. And under this administration is looking more at partnerships to really kind of respond and deal with that. So, for example, look at uh, soybeans. Basically, the two major producers are the United States and Brazil. Um, China can play one off against the other unless the U.S. and Brazil work together. And then, then China can't really bluff anybody. So I I think it's reflective of part of this Chinese attitude from Beijing about finding ways to push back on resistance to Chinese uh, expansion of Chinese power and influence. Um, I think the key thing to watch is not so much the Chinese doing that because we expect them to do that. The key is what's our response to that? And often our response has to be through collective mutually supported effort. I think what is important is that regardless of, of who's in the White House after January, that we continue on the policies that we're on. I mean, the U.S. has been pushing back against China really across the board, diplomatic, economic, military, political. And it has been partnering with allies. Um, so the Chinese don't have space and can't play one of us off against the other. I think it's really important that the U.S. continue to do that, regardless of who is um, the president in January.